What's up guys? We've got another great question from Laura and she wants to know how to turn her mind off. And she's got a really interesting question. I uh, won't read it all, but she's um, she, she has these uh, scenarios and maybe I think uh, you know a lot of us can identify with this uh, with this person, Laura. Um, and she what she does is she plays out sort of the worst case scenarios in her mind about particular situations. So the one that she uh, mentioned was uh, her son and her son being out all night and um, and this was just an example of many different ways in which she does this. But this, this particular example was uh, that her son was out all night and um, she was worried. She was up laying in bed, worried sick about where he was and was hoping that she wasn't going to get a phone call um, from the authorities saying that he got into a... I'm sorry, from the, the police, not the authorities. They're not our authorities, are they? Uh, the police, look, I'm still working on my language. Uh, the police or... Um, the sheriff, uh, you know, that he's in jail or that he went, uh, you know, he got in a car crash or something. And so as she's laying in bed, her mind is going and going and going. And I know that a lot of us, um, and myself included, um, have these situations where, um, you know, just the other day, we're, we're selling our car and we showed our car to someone and, uh, and we're not sure if they were as interested before that than, than after seeing the car. And so, um, you know, Kate was asking about the car and, and so I just created a story around it. And so, um, so basically Laura's question is something that we all deal with, right? We all deal with this idea of um, stress and worry and negativity and fear. And then we start thinking about ways in which, you know, something may happen that's very detrimental or a family member, uh, blah, blah, blah. This could have happened. You know, a lot of people might think about this in terms of their spouse working all night for weeks on end, coming home at two in the morning. And you can start to create these stories in, our, in your head about what's going on, right? And so this is something that, um, you know, relates to health in a lot of ways because um, the stress that we put ourselves under um, has a detrimental effect on our physiology, our biology. It ha has a, an effect on how our cells replicate and duplicate. It has an effect on our energy levels, our stress and um, oxygen transfer and all this kind of stuff. So all of this mental, emotional, spiritual stuff uh, directly correlates with our own health. And so she was asking about ways uh, to overcome this. And um, I thought maybe we could do a video about this. And as a community, uh, we can share ideas about what's worked for you guys. So if you want to do that in the comments below, that would be cool. And so the first thing is um, that I sort of thought about as I was reading her email, Laura's email, is uh, I thought about how we create stories about ourselves and about other people. And so it's really an interesting thing about um, human nature and how we uh, purposefully create stories that don't serve us, right? So we driving down the freeway, we see a guy going 90 miles an hour and immediately, immediately, we say, we start coming up with this whole story. Our blood starts to boil. He's going, maybe he's going 100 miles an hour, flying down the freeway. Our blood starts to boil. We get angry. We get upset. And it's almost as if a play button has been pressed and from a previous recording or story that we told ourselves a long time ago, right? So we have this idea, we have this story about, uh, in this particular example, let's say we're driving down the freeway, someone's going 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out. We have, an, we have a story about uh, why we hate these types of people or, or um, you know, this whole idea of what he's doing, right? And so we come up with the whole story and then we, um, that allows our emotional state to wrap itself around that story so that we can feel justified in feeling disempowered and angry towards someone else, right? Um, in the particular case that we're talking about here with the sun being out all night, you have a story. Um, you're starting to think of worst case scenarios. You're starting to think about these things. So what I want to invite all of us to do is to, to lie to ourselves purposefully to lie to ourselves. So what do I mean by that? I mean by that, I say, lie to yourself in a way that you know you're lying, right? Because a story, a negative story about um, someone driving down the freeway or a negative story about someone, um, you know, not coming home until four o'clock in the morning, um, we're lying to ourselves anyway by telling our stories about how that person got in a car crash or that person's a horrible person for driving so fast. 
All right, so if you're lying to yourself already anyway, why not lie to yourself in a way that's gonna serve you? So what I like to do is say, hey, you know what? Maybe that guy is flying down the freeway. Maybe he, uh, maybe he's, his, his wife is pregnant. He's flying to the hospital. Maybe they just called to him and his dad's dying and his dad's in the hospital or at home and he's dying and he wants to uh, spend the final minutes with his father before he passes away. Or, you know, you can become creative in this way. You can think about your, you know, your story and come up with a nice creative little story and all of a sudden you'll notice that as you tell yourself that story, take a deep breath and you realize, you know what, I can just let all that go, just let it go, right? Pretty soon you can get to the point where you just, that becomes your automatic play button, right? So what happens is that we come up with a story that's filled with labels and um, ways of um, identifying with those labels in a negative way. We wrap them all up into a story and then whenever some trigger happens, someone drives down the street in a loud car, someone does something unjust to somebody else, we just hit the play button. And that play button prevents us from having any sort of creativity in the moment. It, pre it prevents us from being human because it prevents us from having, coming up with an original idea, an original thought of the situation that's at hand currently. Instead, we just hit the play button that we came up with 20 years ago or 30 years ago when we were a completely different person. Our biology was different. Our physiology was different. Our mental mindset was different. Our growth as a human being was different. We were very young in that time. And so 20 or 30 years ago, we come up with that story and we've just been hitting play, stop, play, stop, play, stop, anytime an emotional or physical trigger happens in our life, right? So we start to um, just embody that and all of a sudden we don't even know why we think those things anymore. So why not come up with a story that serves you, that serves you in a way that um, makes you feel good. You can come up with any number of things that would be somewhat believable. Like if your son is out all night, maybe he is helping a friend change the tire on his car or maybe he's you know, doing any number of things that could be consistent with his personality that, you could, that could possibly be true and that you can believe. And then when you start believing that and start separating yourself from the negativity that's been programmed through fear in the media, then we can start cre recreating new scripts and new stories to tell ourselves. So I like to think of it as a way of lying to yourself. Just, just lie to yourself because what's really gonna happen is that that's gonna cause you to grow into, the first couple times you do this is gonna be very difficult because you're gonna be trying to come up with a, a story that it doesn't fit with you because it's so much easier just to hit that play button of the, of the recording from the past and it's so easy to do that. So it's going to cause you to be uncomfortable and to grow, to be creative in the moment when you're not feeling very creative and to think about a positive outcome of that certain situation. So it's going to be a, way, it's going to be a learning curve for you to be able to do this um, in a way that's going to support you because in essence, we have to always realize, too, that the stories serve us in the moment, but the stories are not us, right? So I apologize, we have a street sweeper going around right now, but um, hopefully that's not too loud. But the stories are meant to be held onto and to serve us in a moment when we need them, but we need to remember that they're not there to identify with the story and to um, take that story on as something that you're gonna be using all the time. So I would invite you to create new stories all the time so you don't become emotionally or spiritually attached to any one story. So that you can, in the moment, tell yourself and become creative and become um, open-minded and aware and conscious and tell yourself that there's any number of different scenarios or circumstances that could possibly be true uh, that could make my present symptoms or circumstances feel a certain way. So like let's say you feel a lump in your breast, right? Um, I shouldn't even say your breast. I should say let's say you feel a lump. I should rephrase my language. Let's say you feel a lump in the breast that your body has. Not your breast, right? We're not our bodies. So you feel a lump in the breast that your body has in this moment, and you can create a story around that, right? You can create, you can choose to create a negative story or a positive story based on um, how empowered or disempowered you wanna feel. 
So if you want to feel very empowered and feel like you have control over your health, control over the outcome, and control over your life, then you can create a story that will serve that particular goal. And most likely you're going to come up with uh, an amazing, you're going to have an amazing experience in terms of a survivor story, right? Or you can tell yourself a negative self-deprecating story that has low vibrational energy that pulls you down and in instead of up and out and that usually has uh, a consequence of a diagnosis. And so you can go in any particular direction you like, but why not create stories that serve you and why not create stories that serve other people too? Because um, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure you're included and myself included, is that we create a whole story about someone um, like let's say the story where our husband or wife is working till 2 in the morning every night for weeks on end. Our marriage is not doing so hot and we can create a story based on that, right? Um, but a lot of times what really ends up happening is that the husband or wife actually is working harder so that um, you guys are able to pay your mortgage or to pay, save the marriage or whatever um, so that he can spend more time with the kids even though the marriage, the, the marriage is rocky. So a lot of times what happens is that we create these stories of incredible emotion behind them and that rob us of our health. And we live with those stories for months and years only to realize that they were never true. So now we got to deal with that and we got to deal with the ramifications spiritually, emotionally, and physically of what that story did to us. So why not just at the beginning create a story that serves you and then let it go. Let it completely go. Don't identify with that story. Um, let it go and then you'll be able to much better deal with uh, situations like this. So in, in any event, I hope that helped um, you with your particular situation. If you've had any other instances or circumstances or situations that have helped you overcome negative thinking and negative storytelling to yourself, um, I would invite you to comment below. I would greatly appreciate that. That way we can all help together as a community um, to overcome sort of these weird circumstances and situations that we face ourselves with in life. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I appreciate you guys watching this video. We have a whole set of shows. We have over 380 shows so far on ExtremeHealthRadio.com about natural health alternative healing, all kinds of cool stuff like that. And we're going to be expanding in the future. Right now we do one show a week, but if you're interested in signing up to our newsletter so you never miss any of our shows, uh, we do a show once a week and we write a newsletter twice a week. And you can you always stay up to date if you want to sign up. You can text the word get healthy to 33444. That's get healthy to 33444 and you'll never miss a newsletter and you'll never miss a show that way. And you'll get a great audio program I put together about how I overcame my food cravings. And you'll get a great book that sells for 20 bucks on Amazon. We'll send it to you for free just for signing up. So anyway, I hope that helps uh, you guys and hopefully there's some ideas in there that will uh, help improve your life. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next video.